In representations of the Middle Ages in popular culture, magic is often presented as an alternative, sometimes as a more authentic or as a less repressive religion than the Christianity that the government sponsors. While this makes for compelling fiction, it doesn't adequately explain the complexity of medieval thinking about the natural world, about what exists beyond the natural world, and about how we can define the difference between those two things. What do we mean by natural? Our world is full of things that are visible and tangible. We know they are there because we see, we feel, hear, touch and smell them. We can also tell when something has an impact on something else. We can see the cause and the effect. We knock over the kettle and the water spills. But sometimes the connection between cause and effect is not obvious. Why does steam emerge when we heat water? How does sound travel through the air or through water? In the Middle Ages, they knew that there were many natural phenomena whose causes were unclear to them. They didn't understand about sound waves, for example. But they knew that the explanation lay within the natural world. However, there were other causes whose explanation they thought lay beyond the natural world. They lay with spiritual beings, angels and demons who had no material existence but were made up of a spiritual substance. In the Middle Ages, it was thought that these were able to move matter and to affect natural bodies. They could knock over the kettle. They could cure or cause diseases. This was the realm of the supernatural. These supernatural forces were variously classified depending on where they stood in the fundamental conflict between good and evil. Demons were the fallen angels who rebelled against God. When they impacted on the natural world, it was in defiance of God and to the detriment of mankind. Angels, from the Latin Angelus, a messenger, implemented God's orders on earth. They offered supernatural intervention to help humans in trouble. For human beings, of course, it was often difficult to know whether something strange that they encountered was a natural event whose cause was unknown, or if it was a supernatural one whose cause lay with an angel or a demon. It was no less difficult to tell if something supernatural had a demonic or an angelic cause. Were ghosts just the souls of dead people? Or were they demons pretending to be the souls of dead people? In order to assess the natural and the supernatural causes of things, religion was used as a system of belief and practices that helped to explain the relationship between the natural world and the supernatural world. It provided a mechanism for understanding when and how the invisible world of the supernatural impacted on the material world in which we live. Organised religion authorised the use of certain objects, certain words and actions to enable people to access the supernatural power of God. By using certain words, we requested divine intervention through prayer and through actions or ritual. The church authorised which words and which actions could be used to ask God for help. The words and the objects used in the rituals and the actions used in the rituals were not thought to have supernatural power themselves. They were only a means for asking God's divine help. The church sought a monopoly on these rituals, but they were always aware that they didn't really have that. Ordinary people created their own rituals to enable them some control of supernatural forces. But the church often opposed these attempts. There was a concern that religious objects were being misused, that they were being treated as if they had an inherent supernatural power themselves, rather than being merely a means to invoke God's help. Treating religious objects or religious rituals as if they had their own supernatural power was superstition. In some ways, this is what we now understand by the word magic, an attempt to control supernatural forces that was not authorised or that lay outside formal religion. Such attempts to use ritual without the authorisation of religion was likely to be hijacked by demonic forces and the church taught people that it was likely to cause them harm. The church thought that some people might attempt to use supernatural forces and particularly demonic forces to wrest control over other people. This is what we call witchcraft, the deliberate attempt to use demonic forces for one's own ends. 
This policing by the church authorities of the boundary between what counted as proper religion and what was counted as superstition or magic or witchcraft would become one of the fault lines between religious groups at the Reformation in the 16th century. Protestants developed a new theory of the relationship between the natural and the supernatural world. For Protestants, God worked through natural forces only. He no longer sent angels to intervene in human affairs. The age of miracles had passed and the practice of religion should not use ritual actions or objects to invoke supernatural aid from God. For Protestants, the definition of superstition was enlarged to include all ritual actions, like making the sign of the cross, and ritual objects, like holy water. As well as widening the gap between Protestant and Catholic religious culture, this also led to a gradual widening of the gap between the material and the supernatural world. Increasingly, people saw the supernatural world as out of reach for human beings. What used to be taken as signs of the supernatural world were increasingly taken to be natural phenomena whose exact cause would be found through science. To believe that supernatural creatures, angels or demons were active on earth, or to believe that God intervened directly in human affairs was considered naive or ignorant. It was superstitious. Between the 16th and the 18th century there was what the historian Max Weber has called the disenchantment of the world a process by which belief in supernatural diminished and was replaced with the belief that all observed phenomena had natural explanations that could be found through scientific investigation. However, the more supernatural explanations were dismissed as ways of understanding observed phenomena, the more scholars became intrigued about the nature of supernatural beliefs themselves. The academic study of magic and of witchcraft and the discussion of medieval beliefs about magic and witchcraft in literary texts emerges at the same time, in the 18th century, as rational and scientific explanations for things were agreed to exclude the operation of supernatural forces. So it is just when we cease to believe in magic that we see more of it in academic history and in, in literary texts. Magic was never, therefore, an alternative religion. It belonged to the same belief system as medieval religion. And the belief system that dominates our culture, where the supernatural world, if it does exist, exists entirely separate from the natural world, emerged at the same time as the retrospective fascination with medieval ideas of witchcraft or miracles, marvels and magic that we still find in modern popular fiction. <laughs>